Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum Update Sunday, November 10th. 1 a.m. Mountain Time 2019. You're looking at the current GFS models, which are showing heavy snow throughout North America. Very similar to last winter, or right before it, where we had snow in November in 40 plus states. The same scenario is lining up. Not only that, Shivalush is glowing. Keep calm. It's boom time. You're in the right place. Take a look at these numbers. Cold air from Siberia bringing record frigid temperatures to much of the U.S. Really? Record lows, 20 to 30 degrees below normal. And that's... Let's check it out. Weekend's Arctic blast is only a precursor of that, what could be a deep freeze for the record books. Temperatures are forecast to plummet from the northwest to the southeast. Some 300 cities could set record lows, 20 to 30 degrees below normal. And that's over the next few days. Parts of the northeast are also getting hit with snow. No, Erie, Pennsylvania, saw its first measurable snow of the season. More than an inch of snow fell at the city's airport last night. Holy sheets! That's a lot of snow. But we are worried about the temperatures. So that's the most important thing moving forward. And we have a white screen. Typical Toledo Blade not cooperating. First accumulating snow of the season, followed by near-record cold. And he wore a suit. A series of cold fronts are projected to pass through central Indiana, bringing colder shots of air to the Hoosier State. That is their fate. These are the record colds coming with this next front. And the Toledo will not load. Near record cold gives way to chilly, pleasant Saturday. Yeah, in Boston. Look at those temps. 40 degrees. Hello. We start our second week of November with the feel of December. Temperatures this morning starting off at 15 to 25, pretty close to record lows but November, for November 9th. But we have good news. The wind is much lighter today, and it's global warming. That's your forecast. It's delicious. Look at that. It's amazing. This will not load for us. We're going to do it again. Chance of snow for San Antonio. That's Texas. The nexus of the Schmexus early next week. There will be no accumulation but it will be 15 to 25 degrees below normal, which is not normal for this time of year, which is why it's below normal, basically. Winter's coming. Snow record cold will hit Toledo on Monday. Now, this picture is from some other winter because it's not winter yet. It's fall. But all of the articles we've read are indicative of winter. December, January, February. If you thought last week was chilly in Toledo, get ready to add another layer or two this week. Weather more typical of mid-January is expected to sweep into northwestern Ohio and southeast Michigan on Sunday. And stick around for the early half of the week, which will tweak many with temperatures remaining below normal. And freezing lakes. Yes, that's what happens up there. The lakes, they freeze. Snow expected before next week's record-breaking cold. People wear pink dresses. Or is that magenta? I'm not quite certain. Get ready to see snow even before next week's blast of Arctic-like weather. Wow. So the snow comes before the Arctic-like weather. Wow, that's called weather. Because a cold front moves forward and there's cold behind it. It's like we just got here. Did you just did you just get here? Knoxville could see snow, single digit temps as early as Tuesday, which is their lose day in Tennessee. Knoxville is in Tennessee. Thanks to a cold front moving into East Tennessee this week, Knoxville and the Smokies, puffing it, could see some light snow on Tuesday, which is their lose day, Sam Roberts said. A meteorologist at the National Weather Service in Morristown. Says that people shouldn't worry about the snowy conditions, but that you'll want to bundle up before freezing your arse off. That's what he said right here at Knox News. He said it like Johnny Knoxville. 
Treacherous travel in Alberta had a bitter cold snap, and they brought out the hottest chick they could possibly find. It may not look like much when you dive into our prairie Check forecasting out the high pressure in place, whatever that's called. but actually, this is going to mean upsloping and more snow for areas. Areas like Grand Cache, Grand Prairie, Hinton, as well as. This is on purpose, trust right me. Court. And we are going to be seeing with that mixture of Pacific moisture moving its way up and over. I mean, this was running rock, smoother pressure, earlier. Pushing that up towards the mouth. Mountain slopes, more amounts of snowfall. You could even get anywhere from 20. I can't even win here. They've been blocking this video all night. I've been trying to put this video up all night. This is the third try. I've been working five hours on this video. Five hours on this video. And they've already demonetized the one I just put up an hour ago. So clearly they're blocking my satellite. It's re ridiculous. This is going to mean upsloping and more snow for areas like, like Grand Cache, Grand Prairie, Hinton, as well as White Court. And we I'm done with this. We are going to be seeing with that mixture of move Pacific on. moisture moving its way up and over the Rockies. High pressure. It was a great video. Check it out yourself. Winter weather prompted warnings for much of Alberta and southwestern Saskatchewan on Saturday as high pressure pus pushed snow across much of the western prairies. Snowfall will continue to make tricky travel between Edmonton and they continue to screw with snowfall. us on the satellite. And we're going to try to shut her up. As well. And we love that dress. GFS model coming up now. At least we can control this because we have uploaded the data. Now, let's go into your next several days. Tuesday is your lose day. Most of the east coast, it's Tuesday that brings that snow there, right there. Monday night, Tuesday morning, Tennessee, West Virginia, Western Virginia, much of PA. Going to be picking it up all the northeast, northern Dax, Vermont, New Hampshire, northern Maine. It's insane. And then we have a secondary system pushing down through the Rockies, bringing heavy snow Till the Alberta uh, BC line. And look at the snow coming in on the coast in BC here at the end of the models here. From Monday the 18th through the 26th, over a meter of snow in many regions. They're buried up there. They're buried. They're going to be buried. Snow in North and Mid Wales making hazardous. Road conditions. Big up to the Queen Mother. As predicted, snowfall calls travel disruptions across parts of North and Mid Wales. In Powys at the A458 was closed, with heavy traffic between the A490 in West Fool and the B4953 in Langdon. Frinton. Reopened later Sunday afternoon, uh, North Wales police warned of hazardous conditions at the A470 bit switch in the All Winds of Gwynedd. And the A542 Horseshoe Pass near the Langolin is also shut. Snowdonia, Wrexham, and Mould were the most disgusting cities ever mentioned by Diamond, but they were among the areas affected by the snow. Meanwhile, in England, se severe flooding warnings, rain cancellations remain in effect in many areas where the Queen Mother and rain fell in a single day. Two football matches in the Sumer Premier were called off due to weather and Senfis Druids versus the Cardiff Met at the New Saint versus the Cardiff Met in town. What the fuck does that even mean? It's anyone's guess. It's going to be snowing. I have never seen anything like this. Mysterious ice eggs wash up on beach in Finland. Now, this is like a rock tumbler when you were a, a young lad. Or a lady, and you always wanted to tumble the rocks. What's going on here? It's very bright. You wanted to tumble the rocks. So you put in a little grit and you turned on the machine and it ran around and around and around. While Risto Matilla was walking across the beach in Finland with his wife, he stumbled across a rare phenomenon. The beach was littered with ice eggs. 
which are formed through the rare process where turbulent water rolls over small pieces of ice. Matilla told the BBC that the balls were covered... Anyway, the balls were covered in ice? Is that what he said? These are signs of the times. Things to come. Balls covered in ice. There they are. It's amazing. Seismic update. No quakes of note except... Now, Mary Greeley is going to be off the hook with the 3.0, 29 kilometers west, northwest of West Yellowstone, Montana. It's almost like I hear the crickets. No other quakes of note. Here we have an interesting quake here in China. 4.5 at 10 kilometers. Could be a nuke. Probably not. Probably not a nuke. What is nuclear is po po katabeto. Now, daytime eruption in the last 24 hours is going to knock your socks off. It's dab worthy. Do it now. Well, it's almost like, it's almost like. Give him a thumbs up. I'm number 22. Are you number 54? I hope you're 66. Are you subscribed? I am. Volcano time lapse. Never heard of it. Apparently, I have. Worldwide volcano news update. Kluchiskov, Popo, Dukono, and more. Now, we showed you the Popo puff to 24,000 feet. That's on the list. They're not even making it up. It's a real list. There it is. Boom! 24,000. Kluchiskov puffing. But no one knows how high. <laughs> Depends on how many dads, according to Diamond. Chevalouche is still glowing. That's a live stream or a live cam. It only gets updated like every three minutes, but that was live. More than 1,000. 11,000. Damn. More than 11,000 scientists issue fresh warning. I did a video about three hours ago on this topic. And it is a, it's a problem. Here we are on a left-leaning The Guardian, where all they want you to do is donate and have abortions and save the world from uh, global warming. That's The Guardian, okay? And here we are at Al Jazeera, where they want you to love the terrorist bombers and suck the teat of Russia, I don't, or whatever they do. I don't know what they do there. I really don't know. But they show a picture of burning houses and the same headline. And then we can come over to the place that developed the lie. Now, that headline was picked up by Fox, far left. The Guardian, far right. And others, left and right, including center. And it is all emanating from this chart of a website at the... State University of Oregon's Forestry Department, where the Alliance of World Scientists was created by a forester. And he knows about climate. I bet she has no idea about the Cambrian explosion or what happened in the Devonian. He doesn't even know what Wix Waxy is. Have you ever heard of the Burgess Shale, you schmuck, that invented this website? You're so far from a climate scientist that it's almost a farce that the entire world picked up on your headline and that you got a bunch of idiots that are mouth breathers that ended up at your useless site. I mean, I've been tantalizing and, and emanating through my research for 15 years. I mean, I, I kind of have a billion hours in on this and I've never come across your site until these headlines came up. That's how important the Alliance of World Scientists are. And if you watch my video, you're going to find out the Alliance of World Scientists are volunteers that work at Walmart and other places. I mean, they work at hospitals and they're neuroscientists and biologists and other schmucks that have no, no idea what happened in the geolo geologic past to CO2, uh, mass extinctions, magnetic reversals. They know nothing about catastrophic geology, sedimentology, they know nothing.
about cosmology or other topics. They know nothing about the ideal gas law, the fact that climate science and Michael Mann and NOAA and NASA have perpetrated a fraud over the last several decades of adjusting numbers. They never even heard of Tony Heller or Steve Goddard. They do not know about the facts. And the facts are that you've been lied to and you're continuing to be lied to by the most mainstream sources ever, Oxford Academic Bioscience Chart, garbage. And because the masses don't know that this issue section called Viewpoint might as well be called bullshit. Viewpoint equals bullshit. It's called opinion, op-ed. And the opinion of uh, real scientists when they read this is that it's total shit because you can debunk it in about five seconds. First of all, it's not a study. It's a chart. It's a conglomeration of talking points that have been going on for decades that mean nothing. And they've got a bunch of idiots worldwide to sign this petition of 323 pages worth. The smallest majority of people to sign this are actual climate scientists. The rest are students and other people that work in like baking and uh, foot surgery and other shit because they're experts. They know that it's all we're all dead in 20 years because AOC said it. And we have to start eating babies. Here's 328 pages worth of people that think we should start eating babies. That's my official position. And if you look at the graphs, we're all either going straight down or we're going straight up. So apparently it's the end. I mean, there's pages of graphs. Carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide. Did you suck that little extra gas out of the ready whip? I know you did. Surface temperatures. There's the Michael Mann shtick. Arctic sea ice is going straight down. You see that? It starts at some point. They don't tell you when it starts, but it goes straight down. And here, Greenland ice mass is going vertically down, which is the exact opposite of what the Danish Meteorological Institute is purporting. They don't, that is not what's happening to the Greenland ice mass. It has record levels in the last several years. So someone is lying. And the people that wrote this article, because it's not a paper, it's an article, we're allowed to publish it in Oxford Science Journal of Bioscience, whatever. But they also include graphs of Brazilian Amazon forest loss in millions of hectares, and they show that it's rising after it was falling. Like, what is that proving? It's all, it's all your fault? It went up, and then it went down, and it went up again. And here it went up, and it went down, and it went up. It's all your fault that it's variable. It's completely changing. Here's the per capita emissions of CO2. It went up and it went down. It went up and it went down. Carbon price, up and down and up. Like these graphs don't mean anything. They just put a bunch of graphs up and say it's your fault. So when I publish the video that explains how stupid the whole idea is, here, 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 here we get demonetized. Here's the explanation. This video is being reviewed to determine whether it is suitable for advertisers because more than 11,000 scientists issue fresh warning, untold suffering caused by climate change. Now, you would think that they would support us on this. Here's the problem. They've already tagged our channel as being fake news because we're real news. So when we actually report 100% factual information on the climate alarmism that they are printing, which they're allowed to completely monetize, we're flagged as being fake because they know we're going to tell you the facts about it. Are you picking it up? I just put it down. Now, read this. Usually, you'll get a final decision within a week. Now, this video that I put up in two days is going to, all the views will be over. But I'll get a decision within a week. So, I'm glad I spent time working on that one. Whew. Now, do you know about hemp? 
Pimp Lucid? We have links below. Use Lecon 2019 for 30% off, if you can remember that. <coughs> All caps. Henry Ford invented a hemp car that ran on hemp fuel 76 years ago. And it's called the Dearborn. It's glorious. Ask anyone passionate about the benefits of hemp, and they will tell you about the hemp car produced by Henry Ford in 1941. According to the lore, it was made entirely out of hemp-based plastics and had an engine built to run on hemp fuel. There it is. It is not cutting edge. It is hidden technology. Not cutting edge. The powers that be, the multinational corporations that control the narrative that have lied to you about global warming and every other thing, they fix the price of fuel. They keep you poor. They manipulate the markets. It's so sick. Rock art in Cape York may have been made by the earliest Australians. Now, these pictographs could be six, 7,000 years old. And the same exact looking pictographs exist here in North America. And I just want to share with you a little bit of what I'll be publishing tomorrow from our amazing journey to Mesa Prieta. And that's right here, 616. Let's do this. Maybe you can get some better footage of it. We're going to start about 29 seconds in. Um, so and you're on your own. This smaller, rounder print next to the print that looks human. Um, did a possibly depiction of a human and a bear together. Okay. A or Bigfoot. <laughs> nanny, nanny. Nanny, nanny. <laughs> Where are the prints? Right there. Oh. Okay. There's a small shield right here as you guys pass up whenever you're ready. Wow, that's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Dude, just look at that. <laughs> it's water, man. Right by the spiral. Also see them in connection with things that look like turtles. It looks like his eyes, nose, and a mouth in there too. Uh -huh. Okay, something. so something's on top of his head. The shield. The yeah. Shield. Yeah. And an arrow. So the, this, we believe, was added later. The head was first, and then the shield, or the shield first. Okay. Which is interesting because the shield looks like it's the newest, right, compared to the top part. But it's much more uh, carefully pecked out and mm -hmm. much more densely pecked out. Um, where the one on top is very sparse. So, um, you know, a couple hundred years difference, not huge, but... That's, that's brilliant how you're able to detect, some, okay, based upon how they're, they're etching it. You can tell if it's newer or older as well, based upon their rituals with the, the beats. Well, for us, it's because they'll do both sparse and d dense in okay. all of the time periods. Okay. But we look at the patination levels in the view of how they did it. So if it's sparse, uh, and it would be, when you get a lot closer, the patination levels become clearer. Um, the other Just a sneak peek for all those interested. There are uh, 27 more similar videos that I'm going to jam together and shove right down your neck in the next 24 hours. Hours of powers. Rock art in Cape Town, York may be the same as everywhere else in the world. Dark matter, which is not real, which holds reality together, finally identified as coffee. 
The mysterious dark matter, which is believed to hold the universe together, has been positively identified as coffee, astrophysicists have confirmed, according to this article. Similar to the one about global warming. Now, the LA Times is impossible to get to. You have to buy their stuff or your... And all we're trying to do is share with you the Mercury <laughs> transit. There it is. Boom! Hello. Nope. Mercury's next transit isn't until 2032. If you're going to die before then, you might as well see it now. And that's Monday morning. North America won't get another viewing opportunity until 2049, which is after the end of the world, according to Doug Boat. So there's only one more left after this one. And you'll probably die before then anyway, due to food shortages and anyway. <clears throat> you'll need eye protection for Monday spectacle unless you're at Rex Bear's deck and you're looking through his solar filter. Telescopes or binoculars with solar filters are recommended. There is no harm in pulling out an eclipse glass from the solar eclipses across the U.S. two years ago, but it would take exceptional vision to spot the minuscule, tiny black spot of Mercury as it transits across the sun Monday morning. Mercury is merely 3,000 miles wide compared to the 864,000 miles of the sun. Now, during the 2012 transit of the sun, larger and closer Venus was barely detectable. Now, this is further away and tinier Venus. So it's anyone's guess what it'll look like. It'll probably look like a, a pinprick. Venus's transit will begin Monday entering the bottom left of the sun disk around 8 point at an o'clock. Not the time. If you have a clock and, and, not, and 6 is down here, <laughs> I'm doing a reverse. 7, 8, right around here it'll come across. <whistles> Although the trek will appear slow, Mercury will zoom across the sun at 150,000 miles per hour. And it will take over five hours to do that. It's pretty awesome. Now, NASA will broadcast the transit here at the link, which is linked below, as seen from the orbiting Solar Dynamics Observatory, with only a brief lag. Scientists will use the transit to fine-tune telescopes and other shit, which is awesome. But Rex Bear and I will use it to inform the public that the Earth is not flat. Period. Hope you got something out of the video. The solar simulator is not real. Neither is a stellar core or Nibiru. If Nibiru existed, it is now the asteroid belt or gone entirely, unfortunately. But I digress. Thank you to all of our one-time donors, people that pick up what we're putting down, and those that stick with us even though that they think that global warming goodness is caused by global warming. I might even give Al some bunt cake tonight. I'm feeling just a little spunky. We love you. Be safe.